Welcome to Dare to Leap, a conversation and community supporting women just like you to gain the freedom, flexibility, and financial security you desire and deserve with CEO and founder of Virtual Expert Training, Kathy Guggenauer. This is Dare to Leap, and now here's the powerhouse tiara-wearing Kathy Guggenauer. I am so excited to be here today with my very special guest, Brian Lewis. And if you are not already watching us on YouTube, please hurry over, stop the audio version and hurry over to YouTube because Brian, he knows me so well. We've worked together on many projects already and he knows I always wear a tiara. And today he has on his wizard hat and he looks really good at it. So let me introduce you to Brian. He is the founder of Adminja. That's a software platform for virtual assistants, and it helps them organize their clients and manage their businesses. Brian is a native of Tennessee and has spent the past 20 years in Chicago, leading teams in information design, website design, and small business application development. So Welcome, Wizard Brian. Hi there. Thank you so much for that wonderful introduction. I figured <laughs> if you can be the queen, I can be the wizard. That absolutely, absolutely. And I'm just, I just love that you really get into the spirit of everything. It's it's fun to have fun. We're 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 up it we're is. up late way too often nowadays. Oh my gosh. Well, I I, I try. Yeah. I was just going to say, I'm not, but I have been uptight lately. Yes. Especially with COVID. Do you feel it impacting you and your business oh, yeah. and your relationships at all? Yes. I mean, it's, it's, it's something we can't change, but we want to complain about because it won't stop. And, and, and so sometimes it feels like you're just kind of bouncing around. I don't think I've left my yard in seven or eight days right now. And I'm, you know, you get kind of stir crazy. <laughs> Yeah, I I haven't driven my car in so long. Sometimes I wonder if it'll start. <laughs> Your tires might be flat by the time you get there. Yeah, good point. Good point. But the other thing I think about is, ooh, my car's going to last forever. <laughs> that's a good thing. <laughs> low mileage. <laughs> that's right. Very low mileage. So, Brian, we you know we talk a lot. We have a lot of fun together, and today I get to introduce you to our audience here, which I'm really excited about. And as you know, the topic of this is Dare to Leap. And I know you have a really good story about how you dared to leap. And would you share that with us, please? Sure. I hope, I hope it's not too long-winded. Um, back in the 93, 94 eons ago, I was working as a workflow manager at Prodigy. It wasn't even Prodigy Internet yet. And I was one of those very few geeks that was already on the Internet. And so I was very interested in what was happening there and learning as much as I could. Um, doing workflow at Prodigy, I was managing thousands of calls coming in, making sure that they were directed to the right person who had the skill to handle those calls. We were their call center. And that's where I learned how to put together processes, systematize things, automate reports, that sort of a thing. And that kind of became my stick as, as my other careers kind of unfolded. But I really wanted to work in the internet. I wanted to work on the web and build websites and, and be part of teams that did that. And there weren't any jobs really in rural Tennessee for people with interest in the internet. Uh, people didn't even know what it was. They'd come over to my house and ask, do, do you have the internet in your computer? Because they didn't understand, you know, but this, again, this is 93, 94. Um, so I, you know, really wanted to, and the only places that had internet related jobs were, you know, tech hubs, urban areas. And I had a friend who had just moved to the suburbs of Chicago. So I quit my job, packed up my hatchback and drove with $300 in my pocket to, where were they at? Palatine, Illinois. And stayed on a friend's sofa for about three or four weeks until I got a job in an apartment. Um, so that was my big, you know, leap. Um, and luckily, yes, that was a big leap. What wow, three hundred dollars? Yeah, wow. I had. <laughs> it was crazy. I wow. kind of make that last until my first paycheck. Um, the luckily, I was right. This was the right market to be in. And my first job interview, I had no idea what 
I didn't think I need to worry about it. I looked it on the map and I asked friends, how long does it take for me to drive to Chicago? I need to be there by 11. And they said, oh, it's two hours, you know. So I get in the car three hours early and traffic between there and Chicago was nothing like I've ever experienced in my life. And this is before cell phones or they existed, but they were car phones. And I was just late. <laughs> oh, to the and interview. they were huge, weren't they? Oh, they yeah, were the huge, those car phones. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And get off the interstate into the city and I'm following the map to get to the where I'm trying to go. And suddenly I'm underground because the map doesn't tell you that there's an underground thing. So now I'm wandering around in what felt like dungeons until I find signs for the building I need to go at. I had no idea I was going to the third largest building in the city and um, arrived two hours late, but I walked in the front door and they were like, you had traffic, didn't you? You didn't know. And I'm like, no, I had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> well, that and is an understanding company right there to, really, to have that really attitude. Wonderful. Matter of fact, my boss yeah. there ended up working for my company, Open Motive, for a few years um, before I switched oh, wow. over to building at Ninja. So we've, we've yeah. stayed in touch. We're still friends. That's neat. So you were two hours late and they were still like, oh yeah, we'll, we'll still interview you. Well, they had, we'd already done a phone interview. And she told me oh, later, okay. she goes, I, I already knew I wanted to hire you. I just needed to make sure you were for real. <laughs> so it was, have and, you and, and ever? Had, it, go ahead. Go ahead. I, and she I was just introduced gonna... me to her husband. Ah, uh, I was going to ask you if you've, have you ever gotten fired? No, I got yeah, demoted I once. I haven't either. I haven't never gotten I've never fired, fired either. No, no. I, I don't. I don't really want to have that experience. Well, and now I couldn't because nobody. I'm. I'm not employable any longer. I'm unemployable. How about you? That's not true. I bet you could still get a job. Oh, it's Actually, absolutely true for me. I, I, th <laughs> I think I'm unemployable as well. I, I, two or three years ago, I tried with some companies that I was a really good fit for, and. Didn't even get an interview. And to be honest, I think it's a little bit of ageism. I wasn't oh, in my absolutely. 20s and 30s. And yeah. And the people who are doing that. Absolutely. Are. It's ageism. Yeah. 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 Now you look incredibly young. You look Thank incredibly you. young. So I would think most people, they would have to really dig to like know that you were um, in that age range that they don't want to hire. But with me, I mean, the minute they look at me, honestly, people don't even see me anymore. I'm invisible. Well, I, I don't even, they've never got to see me. It's the, the application. They've got my education history. So you can see, if you can oh, see yeah. when somebody went to college, you know how old they are. Right. You're right. You're absolutely right about that. Um, and I too had that, and this was um, when I was 50. So 13 years ago was the last time I even applied for a job. And um, 2008, is that about 15 years ago? That's when it was because my business took a downturn due to um, uh, you know, everything that was happening. I was a real estate VA. Imagine what happened in 2008 to my business. Oh, wow. And, <laughs> and I was like, you know, I think I'll apply for this job that I'm a perfect fit for. And, um, honestly, I was so sure I was going to get it. I just said, you know, I already bought outfits to wear and everything. That's how sure I, I was. And I never even got an interview. I got a form letter and the person that, that they ended up hiring yeah, the person they ended up hiring was 23 years old, had no experience, no education. And this was to be the executive assistant for the president of a university. You would have been a better fit. No joke. But you know yeah. what? I'm so thankful I didn't get that job. <laughs> because it was one of those knee-jerk reactions to crap, I just lost half of my clients. I don't feel like rebuilding this right now. And then when that happened, I went, what was I thinking? I don't want to, I don't want to work for somebody. So was I was like, reaction. Hey, I had, yeah, it, it, it was, it was a panic reaction, but thank God, thank God I didn't get that job. Do you ever feel that way? Do you ever think, um, whatever it is that happened? Oh, I was really lucky that that, that, that didn't oh, yeah. happen, even uh, though I was hoping for it. Definitely. Especially like uh, when I ran the website design and development shop, there have been proposals that I put lots of time into and didn't get. And then I watched the project with whoever they hired and I'd see what a horrible client they were. And I'm like, I'm glad I'm not in that mess. I'm yeah. glad those aren't my monkeys. Yeah. Right. D you dodged a bullet there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Tell us about why you decided to start at Ninja. And by the way, I love that name. I think I've told you Thank before, you. but I love Ed Minja. <laughs> Thank you. Um, well, I already had a virtual assistant 
helping me when I was running the web design and development shop. Um, she was mostly my personal assistant. She did some work stuff that she, I, I travel a lot and, and had a lot of things going on. So she was just kind of managing everything for me. And one day, Zirtual, whose company I hired her through, just shut their doors abruptly. And I got an email saying, you know, we canceled your contract. You let everybody go. We don't exist anymore. And I was in a panic reached out to her to hire her directly. And uh, then, you know, she's in a panic now because she's lost her job and her health care. And, you know, so I start helping her and some of her friends, you know, here's how you register a domain name. Here's where you go to get your company, you know, registered <clears throat> or get your LLC set up. And in the process, you know, started realizing that nobody's making software for them. And they're literally juggling, you know, not just clients, but they've got, you know, time tracking is in one isolated application. They're doing their billing somewhere else. Tasks, if they're using a management system, is in another system. And their client knowledge base is scattered across Google Docs, spreadsheets, files on their desktop, and Post-it notes. And after realizing how inefficiently they were running things, I started looking for software that might help them and couldn't find anything that wasn't insulting to them. Um, they didn't treat them like they were a resource that can't be trusted, something that put them on a digital leash and took screenshots every you know minute or so. All the software I found back then was geared towards that, and I didn't feel that's the way VAs should be treated. So I decided to talk to a bunch of VAs, see what they need, and see if I could build something to help them. And that's, that's how I got started. And voila, you did. And thank you for talking about that, Brian, because, you know, as someone who has worked as a virtual assistant since 2001 and trained virtual assistants since 2008, I experienced personally what it was like to be mistreated and looked down upon as a virtual assistant. Literally, I had someone, um, and this is, this was before I learned better. Um, some, you know, I, I'm an open book and I share way too much. So I thought it would be a good thing to tell potential clients that I had an MBA. And unfortunately the reaction was, why would you possibly be a virtual assistant? If you have an MBA, that's beneath you. And I was like, uh, no, it's not beneath me oh. at all. <laughs> yeah, it's a and shame. thank goodness again thank goodness I did not get that client because of that but I did stop telling people that I have a degree and um instead they could see my value by what I charged and once I charged what I was really you know the level of the results I gave then that's when I stopped getting nickel and dimed by people and they took me more seriously um and then if they found out I had MB, they're like, oh, this is really cool. You you really have a lot on the ball. Yeah. You already okay, established cool. yourself as an expert at that point. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I, I think some of this might be um, carrying over from, I don't want to be disparaging towards another country or another groups, but there's a lot of large VA firms in Indonesia and India and Let's be honest, a lot of them are just sweatshops. They treat the, the virtual assistants as task monkeys and they're charging really, really, really low rates. And back in you know, the early to the phrase virtual assistant and trying to sell their services. Right. And so that was entrepreneurs' first exposure to VAs was these really cheap mm -hmm. rates. And mm -hmm. we we're not really worrying about what skills they had. They're just, you know, to do the task they're right. sent and and I think that has kind of clouded what an actual virtual assistant is, because our, our impressions have been, or people's impressions have been created by by all those things I saw from those groups in the early aughts. And, and they still continue today, just I'm not seeing it as much as I was before. Now I'm seeing more, you know, VA firms in the UK, New Zealand, Australia, United States that are charging rates that make sense. <laughs> you know, like if you yes. want something done right, you're going to pay for the value you're getting. You, you, right. Nobody's going to do something good for me at six dollars an hour. Like you, you're right. going to have the outlier every now and then, but a, it's not fair to them to only be charging six dollars an hour, and b, right. your chances of finding that person are slim. No, you yeah. should be charging what you're worth. And I totally agree with you, Brian. That that is what I think caused the term virtual assistant to become more of a commodity. 
Mm -hmm. um, because you could get it for, you know, super dirt cheap and, and not just one VA for that price, but like you said, it was a firm of VAs. And, and it's as much one as you have, the, and we can take care of it. You don't need to worry about who's doing the work. You don't need to communicate with them. Yes. Yeah. Right. Right. It really was. And I'd never thought about it at like a sweatshop that, but you're right. That's really what it was like. Yeah. And the quality of it, because I tried hiring some of those before I hired my mm -hmm. VA and the, mm -hmm. the quality of work was nowhere near what I get out of virtual assistants mm -hmm. in the States and the UK. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was so much better when you're paying normal, real valuable rates. Right. Um, and I think also part of what you're mentioning in that you're not seeing as much of that anymore is because there are a lot of entrepreneurs who tried it and they were like, uh, yeah, no, this isn't working. <laughs> yeah, that probably too. But I also think groups like yourself, virtual expert, VA networking, um, all these other groups that have come up and, and thought leaders that have built from the ground up um, mm -hmm. organizations that kind of, you know, not demand respect, but show why you're, you should be valued and why you should be given respect. And right. I, I think the more visibility you guys have, the more it changes that perception. Thank you. Well, that is my mission. My mission is to spread the word about the difference between a $3, $5, $6 virtual assistant and a virtual expert who has the skills and knowledge, the professionalism, the problem solving abilities, all of that. So. So tell us a little bit about Adminja, because if I was just listening to this and I'd never heard it, I'd be like, Adminja, that sounds really interesting, but I don't know what that means, what so, that does. Adminja does a lot. Um, and the easiest way to say it is that it, it automates your client plans, your status reports, your tasks and forms. It effortlessly, tra effortlessly tracks your time and <laughs> captures all the details so nothing falls through the cracks. Um, one of the more frustrating things I've witnessed that virtual assistants go through, especially when you, the more clients you have, um, if your information, and when I say information, I'm talking about how much time did you log last week, what work is on your plate right now, and what's left in your client plan, plus, you know, any deadlines or anything that's going on. If it takes you more than a few seconds to find out where you stand on all those things, you're always worried you're missing something. You're always worried that, the, the, so you're, you're living in a state of constant fear because you're sure you're dropping a ball somewhere. And oh, Ninja yeah. kind of brings it all under one roof. So you can see at a glance, here's where I'm at on my client plans. Here's how much time I have left on this one. We're going to run short. You can reach out to the client and say, hey, we've got you know 15 days left in the month and you've only got two hours left. You didn't have to run a report or do a calculation to, to find that out. And Ninja just tells you. It automatically renews it for you. You don't have to set up the projects every month. So removing a lot of those little admin tasks and keeping everything in one place. So when you need to know what your client's husband's birthday is, it, it's there. <laughs> um, it, it, so, so what you need to do, what you've done, what you need to bill, billing, and plus all the information for, you know, that you need to know to serve them all in one place. And I have had the privilege of having you step me through Adminja so I can see how it works. And then I had you um, do a webinar for my group of virtual experts yeah, and so demonstrate, demonstrate. <laughs> <for them. laughs> oh, they so loved it fun. too. They had a zillion questions for you, didn't they? Mm -hmm. um, and uh, if, if anybody's listened to this podcast for any length of time, you already know this, but in case you're new, I'm going to share this. I'm terrible at everything tech. I mean, really bad. Like as good as you can tell Brian is at it, that's how bad I am at it. I know how to turn my computer on. That's it. Uh, and even I You're can use Adminja. <laughs> even I can use Adminja. That is how really clear in, um, oh, what is that term that, <laughs> I don't even know the terms, where it's just a natural, like I don't have to wonder, what are those three little dots over there? I wonder what they do. Um, it's just, it, it, it's intuitive. That's the word, isn't it? it intuitive and it's visual. So yes. whereas we get used to tools that you're diving down into something and you, as you keep clicking, you're right. losing where you started. Adminja keeps everything yes. visual and we're dealing with cards and, and arrange, organize your information in a way that looks not just nice to you, but that is organized so that your eyes can find what you need when you need it. 
Whereas right. usually you're dealing yes. with, again, those deep lists. Yeah. And, and did, you, did you know what I was talking about when I said, there's three little dots? I have no idea. I need to click on those. Or there might be three little lines. Oh, yeah. Did I, oh, yeah. I, I needed to click on those? Who knew? There wasn't a sign going, <laughs> Kathy, click here. Well, we, we've got a lot of menus that have three dots on them or three bars. Um, but it, it becomes apparent quickly that they're the same yeah. everywhere. So you know that that's a menu. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> I know that youngsters, like my grandkids, they just know. I don't know how they know it. They were just born doing this. But me, I mean, I'm 63 years old and I was not born doing this. Just like you talked. I, I wasn't born with the Internet already there. Um, so I've had to learn this stuff. And the good news, I think, is there are a lot of people, uh, 50 plus, who get into being a virtual assistant and they can use Adminja because it makes sense. It's a lot lower learning curve than a lot of the other, I won't name yes. them, products. At least that's yes. what other VAs who switched have told me. Yeah. The other thing that I really like about Adminja as compared to other products, number one, of course, is that it's created specifically for VAs. And I don't know of any other platform that is created specifically for VAs. And as a result, there's not a lot of other junk, junk stuff, uh, <laughs> features. Yeah, the, the, there's not the, a lot the, of other features that aren't needed. The, the they features get in the way. are what VAs ask for. They're not... Normally, when you're using tools that aren't made for VAs, you're getting a tool made for software developers. So there's all these features you're never going to use. Or a tool made for freelancers, which doesn't have a lot of features that you need because freelancers are usually project by project. So with Adminja, it's a curated set of features, the ones that virtual assistants ask me to build. And, and that's how we build yeah. things. Once we get enough requests for something, okay, that's important enough that we need to research it and build it. And that's how it grows. Those, those features grow out of the requests we get from the virtual assistants that use it. Yeah. And if you're thinking, oh, sure, I've heard that before from software companies, Brian is the real deal. When he says he listens to his users and he provides what they request, he really does. Because I've been um, a colleague of yours long enough, Brian, that I've seen that actually occurring. And I really value that. Thank you. I appreciate you mentioning that. But yeah, yeah. I, I, my, favorite, the fa my favorite part of my job is talking to VAs. And I keep an open door policy. Any of our users can book a call with me at any time. We give free consulting sessions constantly, but I love it. It's, this is how I learn what people need. This is where I learn, oh, there's some friction in how this one control is working. Okay, you know, or just watching somebody use it, I'll, I'll, I'll learn, okay, I can help them do that in fewer clicks. So it's always about looping back around with the VAs to see how they're using it, what else they need, um, and keeping the door open so they can come to me when they've got requests, suggestions, bugs that they come across, things like that. Yeah. So if you're a VA already, or if you're like, oh, I don't even really know about this VA thing, check out Edminja. And Brian, where do they go to check that out? So to check it out, go to www.getadminja.com. And if you go within the next 72 hours, oh no, this is no limit. I'm sorry. The first 25 <laughs> listeners... <laughs> <laughs> that visit getadminja.com and sign up using coupon code dare to leap 2020 you'll get 50 percent off your first three months Woohoo! and you guys um i just want you to know this isn't an expensive program back to those programs that have all those features you don't need you're paying for all those features that you aren't even going to use um, with adminja you get what you need and you pay for that amount you don't pay for things you don't need um, the price is just incredibly reasonable. And Brian, thank you for that special for our listeners. Oh, you're very welcome. I really appreciate Any, that. Anything to help VAs get going. I, I want to yeah. see VAs take over the world because I think oh my gosh, that's what the I world's gearing up for. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're, we're gearing up for that. People just aren't seeing that it's going to happen, but I think it's going to happen. Well, that brings me to another question that I wanted to, to ask you about. Um, I sometimes people say to me, uh, those who don't yet know a whole lot about the VA industry, and they're thinking, oh, this sounds too good to be true. Is this a for real business? And is it really going to last very long? So what's your thought on that? 
the business of being a virtual assistant? <clears throat> well, yes. definitely, I think it's real. Um, it's providing <laughs> way too much value to way too many entrepreneurs, small businesses, large businesses. Um, too many people are relying on it too much already. It's, it's definitely real. Um, I forget the last half of your question, but I, I, I think it is going to be around for the long haul. Um, yeah, that's what I was asking. We, we, we've gone, the world has now seen what virtual is like. And while we're getting a little tired of it being 100% virtual 100% of the time, when we go back to normal life, we're going to be doing virtual a whole lot more than we did before. We're going to be seeing sales teams at even big companies aren't going to be traveling around the world at the same rate they were doing sales pitches. They're going to be doing things virtually more than they did in the past. Same thing for smaller companies. So we're going to be seeing people not buying, renting real estate to start a business. They're going to hire virtual teams. That's going to become like the first step now, not the odd outlier. So I, I definitely see that VA being a, 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 the type of career to get into, and it's going to be around for a while. Again, yeah. I think they're going to take over um, the world. Or they can if they if if if, they, if we position ourselves right, they can. I love it. That's my mission. <laughs> um. So when when people say that to me, I'm like, okay. So do you think the internet's going to go away? And you were the <laughs> oh God, he was. You guys had to go. <laughs> had to go see this. He almost snorted Coke out of his nose, and by Coke, I mean Coca Cola. <laughs> Yes, thank you for the clarification. <laughs> he bad. was taking a drink of soda when I asked that question. Do you think the internet's going to stay around? <laughs> well, we know the answer to that one. There's, there's no way. No, not that. everybody does. Believe it or not, no, the, the, the internet staying around. It's the backbone of of everything. It's the backbone of industry. It's the backbone of healthcare. It's the backbone of how our government run, governments run. I, there, there's no way to take the internet away from us. If we did, we would start failing as a s society, I think, until we found a way to get around it again. Because just too much yeah, of what it's we... only going to keep growing bigger and better, yeah. or at least bigger. You know, sometimes you wonder about better, right? <laughs> but it's not going away. No, more and more things are going to be connected. Um, if 10 years from now, like we've got our Apple watches monitoring our health. I think mm -hmm. 10 years from now, it's just going to be automatic. Every detail about our body chemistry, we're going to be able to see and monitor and report on and have better preventative care because of it. And it, it's because of the internet technology is driving all this stuff, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. keeping us connected. And then, and then people also say, well, if it's going to get that automated, maybe they won't need VAs anymore, humans. So this is just the the programmer tech geek part of me speaking because mm -hmm. uh, AI is such this weird, not perfectly defined term that people who mm -hmm. haven't looked at it in detail or understand how some of the technology behind it works, it seems like magic, right? And in a few years, AI is going to do everything. Well, they said that 10 years ago. <clears throat> After Microsoft <laughs> had Microsoft Bob back in 1994, they were saying they're going to come out with in 95, it was going to be this dog on your desktop you could talk to and he would get you tickets and do all these things. That never happened. And it's st Siri still can't do that. Google can't do that. Amazon maybe kind of, but they're all very specific. Um, it's going to be a lot longer than 10, 15 years before AI can do what we, what virtual assistants do. Unless, unless you're treating your virtual assistant as a sweatshop. Like the sweatshop yes. type work could probably be done by the AI. The... Yeah. Please help me come up with a marketing campaign and social media for this topic. That 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 needs a human. That's going to need a human for a lot for for a while. Like creative right. work is not problem solving is not an AI thing. Not problem solving right. in dealing with people, scheduling, dealing with unforeseen circumstances right before an event. An AI is not going to step in and fix things for you. Your assistant is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what I hear you saying also, um, at least I'm reading into it, and you can correct me if I'm if I'm wrong on this, is that it is the higher level virtual assistant, which I call virtual expert tasks that are going to be needed. And yeah. those lower level are the ones that could go by the wayside of automation. Right. The, the, the tiny little admin tasks. Um, yes. Like, like, like transcription, I think it's a great example. Transcription is a good one, but even like I, my VA every week, she 
backs up my server. It takes mm -hmm. all of four clicks for her to do, but it's mm -hmm. something that I do it. I have her do it so I don't have to, right? Right. That that that's going to be automated at some point. Yeah. Um, yeah. I should have automated it by now, but just <laughs> the way the, the way the host that I work with works, I can't automate it. But oh, okay. The little the little admin things, yeah. We'll eventually AI will take those over, but that will free everybody up to do even bigger things when the AI, right. AI is handling the mundane stuff. Yep, that's exactly how I see it, Brian. And that's exciting. Oh, yeah. Because that's, I mean, and I know that's how you like to think, too. I like to think about those bigger things. I like to think about what's next. I, it's, it, we're at the ground floor of this re virtual revolution, I think. I know it's been simmering for about 20 years, but COVID has really pushed it to the forefront. And I, I, I yes. think we're going to be seeing VA, both the individual VAs and VA firms growing much faster than they were, you know, in, in, in the first half of this, or the, sorry, in the last decade. I, I totally agree with you century. because people were trying, um, people as in businesses, I think they were dragging their feet because they didn't have to, nothing was pushing them to get out of their comfort zone and move into the virtual world until COVID hit. And then bang, they got hit over the head with a brick. Oh yeah. And they could no longer say, well, someday, yes, someday I'll get there. It was, you better do it now or you're not going to have a business. And the whole country got a lesson in just in time learning. Yes, they sure did. They sure did. And I feel really fortunate and I'm sure you do too, to be where we are already, already having gone virtual, already having it these It wasn't businesses. a shock to our systems. We were like, we can do this. We know how this works. Yeah. Nothing. In fact, the only thing that um, every once in a while in the very beginning when COVID shut down and people were like, what do I do? I don't have anything to do. I just can sleep all day and play all day. And I'm like, I can't. I still have to do all the work I was already doing. <laughs> This isn't yeah, work fair. Didn't change for me either. It's like I don't eat out as much. I don't go to the movies. Yeah, you know, yeah. Work hasn't um, changed because we were already working from home. That's right. And now that it's gone on this long, and we now know it's going to go on quite a bit longer, having to to um, be more isolated than we want to be. I feel very fortunate to have had this already in place. Yeah, I, I think it would have been harder on us if we. I, I watch other people, friends who are yes. Gosh, teachers at universities, and they're just they're oh, yes. they're having a much rougher go of it because a mm -hmm. it was scarier because it wasn't something they'd yeah. ever done before. Then the actual doing it was way more frustrating because they're having to mm -hmm. learn how to use these tools and learn how to be in front of a camera and monitor like in a classroom, monitoring multiple people in that you know webinar setting. Mm -hmm. um, and it it took so much energy to get past that that they're already burned out. And, and I mean, yes. I'm not speaking for everybody, but I've seen so many people already burned out. And I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm frustrated. I, I really want to get out, but I'm not burned out. You know, it's something right. I can't change. And I think so you're absolutely right. What I'm doing. And I, I totally see the same thing. Um, yes. So while, you know, we're like, oh, we're a little tired of this. People who had to make the massive changes like teachers, um, they, they have really, um, the brunt of this and, and of course people on the on the front end um nurses and doctors i just my heart they're hurts really for them. tired of it oh my yeah. gosh i honestly yeah. can't imagine how they're even still no. standing um and a really anybody listen to this who's a nurse a doctor on the front line uh no matter what it is you're doing working at dairy queen thank you yes thank you thank you for doing that because you're keeping the rest of us going so, Brian, I'm going to ask you a question that I didn't plan to ask you. So um, you might want to think about this one. A little bit. <laughs> okay. He's getting scared. This really isn't a yeah, scary one. Fine. What's next for you? Have you been thinking about, like, I'm so into your brain. Just, I, I admire your brain and I love watching it work. And I'm like, what's next? Um, well, we're always playing around with different ideas, um, but they don't always flesh out. Like when COVID first hit. Um, the tools that I could find for managing, you know, virtual conferences were really expensive. And I did some research to see, can I help VAs put together a tool to make it easier for them to manage these things? And it was a bit too much of a lift for me to be able to do while I'm running Adminja. Um, the big ideas right now are, um, 
I think there's a need in the VA community for a single place to go for news on what's happening in the community. What are all the conferences? Who are all the thought leaders? You know, all the most popular bloggers, um, events, things like that. There's not one place for it. I, every every few days, I'm surprised there's somebody I've never heard of having an event somewhere. I'm just like, how do we not know about this? Because there's no virtual assistant news. You know, everybody who's mm-hmm. done anything like that, it's their own news. They're not pulling everything right. together. So I've been looking right. at ways to curate automatically, you know, different news sources, different people's blog posts and like yours, like mm-hmm. podcasts mm-hmm. into one place. Mm-hmm. Um, another thing that we're looking into doing, and we probably will, is setting up a you know, Facebook group, uh, a user's group and doing, you know, our own summit with training and courseware for, you know, using Adminja. And we are considering doing some certifications because we've got some VAs out there that want to start selling Adventure training. So cool. we might do certifications for them so they can be, you know, have the stamp of approval that they know what they're doing. Mm-hmm. I love certifications. I can tell you VAs love certifications. <laughs> but I keep you hearing. know it, don't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they do. They do. Yeah. Um, I think um, a big thing that VAs love, which, which I love about VAs, um, is that we all love to learn. We want to learn and learn and learn. And we like to get that, what's that thing that shows that, Hey, we learned this and that's the yeah. certification. So I love that idea. Um, you know, I love the idea of the, the news all in one we place. About that one. Yeah. yeah, we did. And I love that. Another thing that I don't know if you've thought about, but um, a survey, like there's a lot of little companies like you're talking about, you know, there's a, there's a million trainers out there. There's a million BAs out there and periodically somebody does a survey, but I would love to have somebody like you, who's going to do this um, curating of news and uh, all of that be like the survey person who does the survey for this industry. I mean, that's something that's very person who does the stats for the industry. If, if we can get, and and I'm sure it's not something that I'd be doing on my own. And you and I have talked about this in the past and I, don't want to go into too much detail, but if we can get a, a a news hub that becomes the place that the majority of EAs go for their news, then we have yeah. an audience that we can then use for surveys. Because all these other right. surveys that are going out, you're just seeing the audience of that one thought leader answering the question. Right. So exactly. if you did a survey with 30 questions and Iva did the same survey with 30 questions, right. you're going to get vastly different results because you're only Absolutely. getting two different audiences with very little overlap. Yeah. And we, we need something a little more comprehensive, but right now we're in yeah. so many little silos. There's, there's mm-hmm. understandably, and that's why I'm hoping that mm-hmm. maybe because I wouldn't have any kind of monetary stake in providing news mm-hmm. that right. I could be that. There, or under and the that's Amendio also Bola, why I see can, you being the survey person. Right. Kind of like, like the, yeah. I hate to use the word secular, but we're not putting any preference <laughs> in any one association or yes. thought leader or anything. Yeah. 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 Exactly. That's exactly how I see you. Yeah, I love that idea. Yeah. The neutral part. Um, <laughs> and, you know, there's no career that you can really go. And I'm going to share a stat that I heard, but I would, I would love to have somebody like you. I mean, your brain just thinks this way too. start having stats for, you know, how many VAs are there? How much, how much are people spending on VAs? you know, all of that. And here's a stat that I, that I heard. um, And this is actually freelancers in general, um, freelancers, independent contractors, you know, all that lump sum of that industry, not Uber drivers and people like that, not the gig workers, but the freelancers, independent contractors, VAs. Um, The industry was $1 billion in revenue before COVID. And since COVID in this six months period it's gone to one trillion yeah yeah i remember i may have heard that from you though but i do remember hearing that <laughs> i'm spreading I, that rumor no actually i, I heard I, I heard that from it's from somebody else <laughs> i i, I want to find the source of that because i have a feeling that it's again like we're now ordering things and having them delivered so those are an independent contractor right. brought me my wood today normally i would have gone to pick up the wood yes. but covid so they're doing deliveries right. Yeah, that so that, that that's yeah part of that, but is it really like that doesn't parlay into what VAs do or any kind mm-hmm. of VA trends? Um, yeah, I agree that, with you on that. Such a saying freelancers and contractors is such a big 
broad, vague group. It is. It is. But it definitely um, so is let's growing. Just we say, just don't have a way to did it. it. Yeah. What what would be uh, how many times would you times a billion to get to it to a trillion? A thousand. Is it a hundred or a thousand? A thousand. A thousand. A thousand. So let's just let's just say it that way. It's a thousand times bigger than it was before. I I would agree with that. I would agree with that. Yeah. I I I think contracting, freelancing under that umbrella. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can see a thousand percent increase. Virtual work. Because that's that's all we're doing now. Like everything yeah. went. Let's that call direction. it virtual work. Because it's not all virtual. Because work. if we called it vir virtual work, it's not all virtual. Did you say no, it is? I mean, you can hire a contractor to you know build you a website. That's it's not really. It was never considered virtual work before. We might talk oh, to them on Zoom now, but it's it, it's. I mean, maybe they fall under the same umbrella. I, I I'd have to think mm -hmm. about that. I for a while. I say they do. I say a website developer does. So what, what, and are yeah, you saying they're not the same, the same tools, the internet, the laptop, yeah. whatever software you got. Yeah. yeah. It's virtual work. Yeah. Just never thought of it that way. Yeah. Online. Is that what you would call it? online work? I just always called it freelance and contract and I've separated virtual assistants out because okay. their model's different. You don't, you don't go yes. to virtual. I mean, you can go to virtual system on a per project basis, but that's not what we see as the general rule usually there's some right. ongoing subscription whereas exactly. contract freelance work tends to be i hire you for this project you do the project six months right. from now i'll hire you to do some maintenance on that project but it's not an ongoing yeah. you know official monthly thing so i've kind of separated them out based on how i, that I see it exactly is. the same way okay i, yeah, I, I see it technically i mean they're using the same tools so you're 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 right in that stance yeah yeah what about that term gig worker have you thought about that one at all? Not a huge, not a huge fan. I don't dislike it, but it just, it's <laughs> again. You mean the term? It, it, you don't like the term? I don't like the term. I I, I think it's, again. I don't either. Kind of, I hate that term. It's to the person doing the work. Yes. You're yes. just a gig worker. It's a, you're a temporary, yes. you're, you know, you're, you couldn't get a real job and you, you, you so you're yeah. doing, and I, 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 I think it's not a great term to use. Um. But yeah, I don't like it. Either. Thank you. We're never one. using like let let's gonna, use this. Change. The word we do not use. <laughs> but that's what we'll call it from now. Through on. a change, both in technologies <laughs> and and what we're dealing with yes. uh, on a global level, and so we've got new we've yes. got new things that need labels. So <laughs> we come up with words for them, and then figure you're out right later, about that. that word doesn't work. Virtual assistant. I mean, right now, that's the most impossible keyword to to do ads for on Google because that phrase, yes. Siri, Cortana, Google. That's right. Because That's nobody right. really. That's why really I'm getting virtual well experts known. Right. Yes. I know. I know. Yeah. It, it, and, and the, and the acronym VA veterans administration or Virginia. All the That's time. What comes up. I think I'm talking about the VVA, <laughs> not AVA. All the time. I know. I, me all too. Me too. Me too. Well, Brian, I think we've solved all the problems of the universe. Yay. We can have a drink and go to bed. <laughs> we can rest, have our seventh day rest. <laughs> so before, this has been so much fun, but before we wrap up, I just want people to know one more time, tell us who, and, and I know the answer to this, but I just want you to say it again. Who is the ideal person to use Edminja? And if they are ready to find out more about it, how do they do so? The ideal person to use Adminja is a virtual assistant. Whether you're a solo virtual assistant or you're managing a team or you're trying to grow into managing a team, Adminja will take you all the way. Um, I forgot the second part of the question. <laughs> so let's just pause there for a second because I yeah. also want to say, don't you love the way I ask compound questions? I think I'm going to add on two more next. I'm going to do four in a row next. <laughs> okay. But I'll, I need to ask one at a time. I apologize. I always answer the last one first. <laughs> yeah. You know what my husband does? My husband, I do that to him. Surprise, surprise is how I talk. And he, he goes, yes. <laughs> that's the appropriate response when somebody gives you a string of questions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, you said that the perfect people 
are VAs, whether they're new VAs, they're a VA, a solo VA, a VA with a team. May I also um, ask about OBMs, online business managers? Uh, yes, they would definitely um, be in the right audience for okay. um, the yeah, where you're cool. going to run into some slight differences because at Minjo, we talk about it being an all in one and we try to have all the tools that a VA would need um, mm -hmm. for managing the clients and business, not the tools to do the client work, but to keep everything together. Um, OBMs tend to need a lot more tools to do what they do, specialized tools for managing the business. And the, the business might have a certain project management tool that they're using and enforcing. They would need to use that instead of Adminja probably because, you know, so there is that oh, difference. Sure. But when it comes to managing the client information, managing and automatically tracking and renewing your billing plans um, and the, the time tracking, you know, if you're billing by packages or by the hour, the time tracking alone is, is worth it. Um, because time trackers suck. Most time trackers just. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I hate they're to be horrible. That blunt, but they're just and thank you for, <laughs> no, it's true. And thank you for bringing that up because I really wanted to emphasize that and I forgot about it earlier. If you are a virtual assistant who's like, how do I time track? Get Edmenja because there isn't anything better. There is nothing at all that works nearly as well as Edmenja's time. And, and Brian's not, I mean, Brian is absolutely right. He might be the creator of this, but I can tell you from a user perspective that the time tracker alone is worth it. I, I'm not into bragging. Um, and one more thing I wanted to mention. Tracker, yeah. yeah, go ahead. Oh my God, it, it, it is. It's a lot, it's exactly. so much easier to capture and invoice your time, getting it to the invoice. Um, there's not five other steps in between. You'll, you'll find a nice smooth flow there if all you need to do is track time and invoice, just that alone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, you, know, <laughs> you know how I said I'm not techie at all? You know how I time tracked? <laughs> Back in 2001, <laughs> I looked at the clock and wrote it at the top of whatever I was working on <laughs> the time. And then when I would pause, like the phone ring or I had to go to the bathroom or I was done, I looked at the clock and wrote it in again. I did the exact that's how same bad thing I when was. I worked at agencies. When, when, I, when I worked for agencies in Chicago, that's I just had my notepad with me all day long and I'd write the times down when I was doing things. Yeah. So at the end of the day, I could yeah. fill out my timesheet because nothing's, oh, filling out a timesheet yeah. at the end of the day or the end of the week is such a pain. You won't have to do that in Adminja. And, you know, <laughs> yeah. And he, actually, you made me think of something because before I started doing it online, um, you know, the steno pads with the spiral at the top. Oh, yeah. I That's what I carried yeah, with constantly. Me. That's what I carried with me everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. And I think I actually still have like 20 of them in this drawer next to me because I haven't bothered. <laughs> now I print out nothing. I have nothing on paper. Um, I don't file anything unless it's electronic. So. I had to scrounge to find a pen to fill out my ballot this morning <laughs> because I made this a paper-free house. And then, then you realize, well, once you don't have paper, you stop collecting pens. And then when you need to write something down, what do you do? Well, you need, you need one of my pen. special crown pens. Oh my gosh, <laughs> this is what that. we gave away at the virtual event. Uh, um, crown pens. How I'll did you find that? Wow. wow. I know. We can find anything with crowns and tiaras. We can find it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so um, I wanted to mention, I wanted to go back to something you just said about when you're working like an OBM is working with a client, they may need to use whatever um, <clears throat> program, um, organizational program, whatever project kind of program that tool. the client may, yeah, project management tool, thank you, that the client wants to use. Now, to me, Brian is someone who's actually done this work and trains people on how to do this. That is an aside thing. That is a thing that is with you and your client and you're doing that for them. It is not your project management tool that you've right. purchased. Right. It's the clients. And that's right. where Adminja is different. And really what makes Adminja something that you need um, as a virtual assistant, virtual expert, OBM, and quite honestly, freelancer, unless you're just doing all projects. In any kind of independent contractor who does ongoing work, um, admin is going to be that thing that's going to really support you that you own and you run, and it's going to stay with you no matter what clients you have or don't have. Yep. This does is that not, make sense? This is, that makes perfect sense. This is not something that the client owns. The clients are going to have their systems that you need to work with. If you 
you know, if the client wants to assign you tasks in their system versus, a, you know, sending you an email, you can hook Adminja into that through Zapier integration so that anytime they give you a task, it shows up at Adminja for you. Um, so there's ways to smooth that process when they need you to use another tool. Um, but Adminja is yours. It's for, for you to manage the information that you need to manage on that client, not the information that they want you to manage. Um, it, it's, it's for you yeah, to run your it, business, not the other way around. And I think that's really important. And that's going to set you apart from other virtual assistants who don't have something like this because it makes you more professional and more efficient. And quite honestly, it also makes you more money. And do you know why? Do you have any kind of stat on how many, how much money is lost by VAs who do not have a good time tracker? I do not have stats on that. I would love to have stats. So on that. one, <laughs> one of the VAs in my group who she, and she's really uh, very, very analytical. Um, she tracked it two different ways, her time two different ways, um, the way she, you know, normally did like I did, you know, putting the time in or whatever, and using a system like Adminja, and she was losing 20% of her time. So she increased the amount that she earned by 20% by simply using a system like Adminja. Basically, you need to capture every second. Not every minute, every yes. second. So that's right. And the, the problem with most time tracking is you're usually manually logging it in. So oh, I spent about five minutes on that, not manually logging five minutes. Whereas at Avenger, yeah. every time you're working on a task, you're hitting play and pause on that task. Rather than logging two minutes here, one minute there, it's one minute twenty seconds turns into three minute forty five seconds, and you end up with more minutes in the end being billed than you would normally. No, I have seen that uh, more than once where people have realized that they just keep their timers running and chain the timers together yep. um, so that no seconds lost. They're always under a timer billing way more yep. than if they were just taking it from memory and writing it in a timesheet. Yeah. So um, think about this. Look at however much you're making right now. If you're not using Adminja, add 20 percent. Now, I'll bet you. <laughs> I will bet you that that will way more than pay for Edmund. Yeah. yeah. And you'll save enough time that you can take on some more clients. That's right. Like once you That's once right. it's the it's the admin work that drives you crazy, not the client work. <laughs> and if the admin work is automated and taken care of and you're not having to run reports to know where you stand on everything, you feel more comfortable taking on more clients, which means, you know, more money. Yeah. Quite simply. Which, um, and I know our podcast is going really long. Just keep listening, folks, because this is, we got something good at the end too. <laughs> but I keep thinking of different ideas here, which is, um, I literally have an ROI calculator that I use to help uh, virtual experts and virtual assistants determine how much they can earn based on the number of hours that they work. And I decrease the number of hours they work by 20% for non-billable hours. Because, um, you know, there are non-billable hours that you have right. to work There's in what you just hours. called admin work. Yeah. And yeah. a big part of it will be cleaned up. You won't have to have so many non-billable hours that you're working with Adminja. Right. No, no more running reports at the end of every week to send to the clients. No more setting up new projects at the beginning of every month. All those things just happen automatically for you. So you can just do the work and track your yeah. time. And if you're listening to this and you're thinking, oh, I never thought about sending my clients reports at the end of each week. Hello. Think about how much more professional you'll be. Think about how much more your clients will love you if you do that. And, when they and see that makes little, it very easy. When, when they see more than just, here's the hours I worked. When they see a status report saying, here's where your plan stands. It renews in this many days. Yes. Here's how much time you've got left. That gets the client more engaged in, oh, I need to start handing off more to them. And our, the whole goal is to get them to buy bigger packages. So you got to get them using up that package they already have before they're going to upgrade. So if they're seeing that every week, they're more likely to start filling it up. So they're using more hours and then finally cross the threshold to, to, to go up to another tier and buy a bigger package. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, 
And not only have we solved the problems of the world, we've also helped VAs learn how to earn more while working less time. So I think our job is done here, Brian. Mm. <laughs> Wish I had a magic so. wand. <laughs> oh, I have one. I right use right your here. pen. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I got my pen right here. Um, before we go, I asked Brian in the beginning, not only um, did he tell me that he would give you guys that discount, which I'm going to have him tell again here in a minute, but we also talked about what all we wanted to talk about. And there were so many things, as you can tell, we've already, this is the longest podcast I've ever done, Brian, and I'm not surprised because I love talking to you. Um, but he has a whole nother topic that he wants to talk about, but we're only going to be, Brian only w is willing to do this if because <laughs> I told him this is what we're going to do. <laughs> and okay, I have one other thing. He's only willing to come back and talk on this topic and wear a different hat. How's oh that? Oh gosh. Okay. <laughs> okay. It could be a headband or a hat or no. any, any kind of headwear. Okay. We've got hat. We've got headwear. Um, or you can bring a wand or whatever you want. Some, some kind of um, thing um, that you will uh make everybody want to go look at youtube to see so okay. you're going to do those two things you're going to come back and talk about another topic a really hot topic that is really um a big opinion on his mind and controversial and, and important to the va community and wear some other outlandish um <laughs> attire of some type so if you would like to have brian do that please comment and say what, what should we have him say we want brian <laughs> i think that's a good one we that want brian <laughs> we want brian so I comment we want brian yes oh i love it we want brian we want brian we want brian and if we get at least 25 of those comments then brian is going to come back and talk on this topic and have a new hat or other prop by the way, I didn't want to tell you this until until now because you just took your hat off. I was afraid you're going to take your hat off earlier. But when you had the hat on with your um, Apple pods, it looked like you yeah. had earrings on. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's the downside of these I loved it. little pearl earrings. But the hat's getting a little too warm. My it was really steaming. cute. It was really cute. <laughs> I can't wait to watch it. All right, Brian. <laughs> um, tell us one more time where to get Adminja and what the special um, bonuses that you're offering. Sure. Uh, www.getadminja.com. That's G-E-T-A-D-M-I-N-G-A.com. And check out with coupon code dare to leap 2020 all one word, dare to leap 2020 and you'll get 50% off your first three months. And that's after your first 30 days are free. So you'll basically get four months worth of Adminja for the price of a month and a half. Woo, that's amazing. And um, as Brian just alluded to, if by chance you're listening to this in the year 2025 um, or something crazy like that, or after the first 25 are gone, um, he does give 30 days free. So it's not like you're losing out on everything because you get 30 days free to give Adminja a trial. I'm sure so, between Brian, now and 2025, so. I'll have more promos. <laughs> yes well and if we get enough people saying we we want brian i want brian um we're gonna bring you back real soon <laughs> looking forward to it hope it happens oh it will i know 25 people that i can have go put it on <laughs> <laughs> you're not supposed to put your thumb on it <laughs> oh yeah well I, I want i want to see what you come up with uh, what outfit you come up with next. So. Okay. I already have some ideas. Uh, oh, exciting. All right, Brian, thank you so much. Thank you. It was a pleasure. I really like talking to you. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you for listening to Dare to Leap. Say hello and access additional resources at virtualexperttraining.com. There you'll be able to connect with Kathy to share your feedback and join her community. Join us again soon on Dare to Leap. Until then. Mm -hmm.